Team Axanabel are about to cross the finish line here and take their first leg win. Leg six, they had so much to do. They had so many attacks to fend off. And all the way right down to the finish, Team Axanabel striped and pushed their way through. And now, Simeon Team Point, they can include themselves in the list of leg winners in the Volvo Ocean Race. The breeze arriving now for Team Axanabel, the line right in front of them now. And Team Axanabel cross the line, winners of leg six, Hong Kong to Auckland. <laughs> oh, Conrad, the celebrations say it all. You know how hard a leg has been and you know how tough it was to hold it off all the way to the end when the celebrations are that good. I do, and it's just so exciting watching the raw emotion of this team that, that has had all of that building for them for so long. I, here in the studio in Alicante, you know, we're 19,000 kilometers away from, uh, from that boat that just finished, uh, finished the race in first place, and I've got the goofiest grin on my face at the moment. Just, I, I, I know what that release is uh, and, and just how exciting it is. It's a hard, hard fought victory, and it's not just this one leg that I've been battling, it's all the way. On board at the moment with Sun Hung Kai Scallywag, a second place for David Witt as they come across the line. A great result and at times, there was earlier times, 12 hours ago, maybe 20 hours ago, there some nerves, Mafre, Dongfong, there are other boats really closing down as these two were, were, were becalmed and David Witt was saying on the boat feeds, oh, you know what, first would be great, but I'll take a second. Yeah, do I get a kiss? <laughs> yeah. I told you. I, I, I heard the ordered rapist. I thought, I know that voice. <laughs> I saw the flyby like this. Hello, darling. Hello. Now, just before we get an interview here with David Witt, that was quite interesting, Connor, because he said, oh, I saw the flyby, and we might have a little bit of an idea as to what they're talking about there with uh, their owner, Mr. Lee, and, and right, his plane. And gents, I'm here with the second place finisher, David Witt. Mate, it was a fantastic race. Talk us through that last 24 hours. And for you guys, it's momentum. Another podium finish. Yeah, yeah, good for us. Uh, didn't feel like 24 hours. It felt like three weeks like that. We were next to him off uh, Japan, Taiwan. Never got away from him. So. But the boss is here. And uh, he told me he'd come down if we won and we didn't win. So I'm about to face some music, I think. Uh, he looks like he's got a smile on his face and the team looks to have smiles on their faces as well. You guys have got the momentum. How was the feeling on the crew? Oh, yeah, really good. Um, we never give up. Uh, we're still trying right to the end. We're only, uh, I think, uh, about 15 minutes out. We're only a couple of boat lengths away. So, um, you know, we uh, had a couple of opportunities that we didn't take and, you know, hats off to Axe Noble. They sailed really, really well.
fast, furious, great sailing, good sport. How do we go? Uh, what did we get? One, four top fives. Four top fives. It's not bad. Consistent. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting <laughs> conditions, very windy and gusty. Yeah. I need a pint. But we had a really good time. <laughs> I'm from America, he's from the UK and he's from here. Uh, today went very well, pretty much ex as expected. Weather forecast was spot on, just building breeze all day until maybe 28 knots, so it got uh, pretty exciting in the in the last race. So very much as expected, um, really competitive fleet, very tight starts, everybody sailing, seems to be sailing really well, so um, just bodes well for the rest of the week, just great racing, good organisation, and then lots of smiles on dials, so thumbs up. area and we are passing uh, uh, between a small uh, atoll and we are passing uh, around the, the, the northwest one and uh, in his south his name is the surprise I hope we'll, uh, we'll have a good surprise Yeah, the race started on a, on a positive note when we caught Rambler on our way to Barbuda. So I think clearly we, in these winds, we were we were significantly faster on a reach. On most normal courses, this boat gets us, but because this race had three tight reaches because the wind was far enough north that, that all of a sudden we started to realise this is possible. The, the wave state was really big and there was a lot of wind. And uh, we were going very fast. Uh, from Tentamera down to Guadeloupe was at night. And um, very fast, very intense, very wet. I was trying to shield myself from the spray every possible way because it was coming from everywhere and I just couldn't see anymore. And in the end I was just shutting my eyes for as long as I could and just, just trying to focus enough on the instruments just to go, yeah, yeah it's about right. Uh, I think on the whole, uh, the conditions were just perfect for pairing. This is the ideal place to race multi hulls because you're going to be wet in a multi hole and if you're going to be wet it might as well be warm and so it's a combination of the great wind you know predictable wind generally great scenery it's a, it's a wonderful course well it was a hard race as you would expect there were some retirements i think eddie will tell you how many quite a few and it was good strong trades 20 25 the whole way around the track and you might say why did we beat the record uh, 
That's a good question. I think it might come down to evolution and design. It took a ton and a half of displacement out of the boat, so it's lighter and livelier, and it, it just gets going. It gets up and goes very quickly. Everybody notices that when you drive the boat, that if it sort of falls out of the groove, you just turn it down and away it goes. You always just wait for that, that sudden bang. It signals trouble because we've all had those bangs and they can be of greater and lesser severity. So you worry about that more than anything else and making sure nobody gets injured and nothing breaks. I think it's remarkable in this race where the boat is so highly loaded, nothing broke. But still you remember to sit around. It's kind of like the end of the world. I mean, sometime I want to go there as a tourist and see what it's all about. I would say this time we did not leave much on the track. You always leave a few minutes here and there, and things happen. And like we were behind Redonda for a little longer than I might have expected. We came around the, the eastern side of, of the island with uh, Proteus right next to us the whole time, and uh, knew that if we couldn't beat them on the reaches, that we were going to have trouble with them on the whole course. So uh, we get on the reach, we had to put up everything that we knew was the right sail, the water in, the trim tab on, and go as hard as we could. The two runs uh, from the Barbuda mark were our, our, our two big moments. And on the backside of all the islands leading up to, to go around uh, St. Barts and St. Martin, uh, we had the fro on doing 30 knots on that, and that was when we really left Proteus behind. <laughs> uh, we go around and try to sail on all these other events and get smoked half the time because, you know, we're, <clears throat> we're built tough. We just basically stopped behind one of the islands, put the boat head to wind, did all of our changes, and then took off again. Because for us, it's it's easier just to stop the thing than to try to go on the bow when it's windy. You know, we're we're very prepared to have to put two reefs in, to have to use the J4. You know, we were we were actually hoping it would be J4 and two reefs for the entire race. You know, we knew then we would have no nobody else on the race course, but it's a shame that it happened. Uh, wasn't that windy? Went well. We survived. It was a bit of a. Uh, battle I think with the trade winds being as strong as they were and I think we've kind of found some places to push and found some spots to kind of ease off again and you know a lot of us are uh, kind of inshore dinghy guys but luckily we brought some uh, heavy duty offshore uh, artillery and I think uh, a little bit of the combo of the two um, kind of helped out a little bit. bit uh, it's a bit scary going uh, you know a 90 degree true wind angle for eight hours in the dark but uh, you know, hopefully a little bit of uh, moth experience, a little bit of GC experience, and Marstrom experience uh, has kind of upped our capacity for on the edge a little bit, and um, so that makes it kind of fun. It's still, I'll, we still respect it to no end, but uh, but I guess you have a little bit more of an appetite for it after a little while. Um, I had a really annoying noise on my computer. I didn't know what it was, and it was an alarm I've not heard before. Of course, you think, ah, man overboard, you don't actually think that a boat's capsized. It took me a while to try and work out what was going on, and at the same time, I was going around Sabre, so it was quite busy, and then I saw Proteus seem to have turned around and gone back, so my first assumption was that Proteus may have had a man overboard, and that was it. So we was expecting to find at the scene of the crime, as it were, um, just a life jacket or just a AIS that maybe Proteus had picked the person up and gone. So I was expecting to find innocence rather than uh, what we did find and then finding out that it was a catamaran upturned and people on it. In, in the end, I eventually ended up uh, uh, working as a relay station with the French Coast Guard for about 45 minutes. But it's something I guess I've done having been a search and rescue pilot. It was not a problem. It was just racing full on and search and rescue full on is exactly the same game really. I think it went really well. I think the boat uh, does light up and it really lights up with a bit of, of a reaching sail. It's a, it's a tough boat to race hard. And, uh, and that was a tough race. The problem is electronics and seawater don't go that well together. And that's my job really on board and trying to sort things out. And uh, it's a struggle. And on one occasion, we uh, had a complete shutdown. Or no, on one occasion, maybe, uh, maybe I reset my computer 80 times. Maybe I reset my wireless system 35 times. I don't know. But uh, it's, a, it's a battle.
obviously with the, the rule being written at the moment, um, there's a lot of work going on with uh, the different concepts and developments uh, to be part of that rule. We started off in, in August with just a piece of paper and uh, some ideas and came up with this. Looking at some, some new concepts for, for a mainsail for this boat. Trying to keep a lot of the tradition of um, mainsail design still, still in this, but to try and improve the aerodynamics and get a bit more power out of a rig like this. Yeah, the idea is to um, have a practical solution for an efficient wing that we can, um, that every everyone can have it, so we get some trickle down to the bit. Just flapping a bit, right? Pull that on until it stops flapping. We've done enough work on it to know it's a fast concept, but you've got to do the basic things like tack and jive and make the thing you know, go up and down and just silly little things like that before we uh, commit to this for the next three years. You know, it's quite a big step to take. But... Absolutely. This thing's got a, quite a big D-section mast that forms the leading edge of the, of the mainsail, and then it's got uh, two mainsails coming off the back of the shear web of that. Together that form, forms quite a nice aerodynamic, uh, aerodynamic shape. Um, we've also, you can see up the top, we've got a gantry up, up the top there with a control arm where we can uh, sort of help support the, the leech up there and, and twist her off. Six or seven of us working on this for the last six months, done a lot of simulation work, but to, to see it in reality, even at a small scale like this, but big step today to, you know, in our confidence that this thing's something uh, a bit different and it should be pretty good. It is certainly a, a huge step towards that rule finalisation and, um, you know, a big part of the, uh, the future class in the America's Cup.